Hey everyone, so I got a request to please do um, worksheet 4.02. I at first was going to do this as a Zoom, um, but then I went through it and looked at it and it is so long, like the lab is so long. So I, I figured if your students were doing it with me on a Zoom, you would it, it would take us two hours. <laughs> so I am going to try and do this quick within half an hour's time, hopefully, maybe less. Um, and I'm just going to jump right into it because we've been over this um, uh, cells in the structure of life already several times. So I'm going to go right into it. <laughs> and remember, cells in structure of life or uh, cell theory is basically um, how we discovered cells and how we discovered that life isn't just spontaneously generating out of nothing. Remember how... Um, how I said, um, like, um, people thought, like, back in, like, the uh, Roman times, people thought, like, um, like, bacteria and bad stuff came out of dirty clothes, like, just because it's dirty and it just comes out because it's just nasty. Um, we proved that that wasn't, you know, true. Things get dirty and they get dirty from cells and you have, to, cells have to touch other cells in order for things to multiply and get worse. So yeah, um, just to recap on that. So this is what this lab's all about, is we are doing um, um, cell theory in the form of a lab. And I remember, <laughs> and I know it's, it was so unfair of them to give this to you guys the second week of school. And it w I didn't even know. I had to search for it. So it, that week was rough. So I, I think it's well due that you guys deserve this. So I'm just going to go over this. Um, first, I'm going to get the worksheet, uh, which is right here. It's a lot. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get it done. All right. Um, open file. And I love how it... See, I, down, I have downloaded it 25 times. <laughs> yeah, that, for, that second week was just awful. All right. All righty. This is why we're grading with grace and compassion because everything's so difficult for you guys and I totally get it all right so once again cell theory all organisms are made of cells you a plant your dog <laughs> trees um, bacteria they're all made of cells okay um, cells come from existing cells meaning um, uh, like in order to make a baby, we have to, you know, reproduce, uh, or in order to make another plant, the plant has to, uh, pollinate and, um, has to grow and after it's been retransplanted, um, and cells are the basic unit of life, meaning, um, all cells are alive and you need cells to be alive. <laughs> All right, um, main function. All right, so before we answer, what is, uh, wait a minute, before we answer this one, we're going to do that last because, um, well, no, let's just answer it right now. <laughs> I just kind of told you what this lab was about, so put that over there. Um, to learn the components of cell theory. It's teaching us about cell theory. Let's put this around here. Make it red so you can see it and let's zoom in. Components means the parts of cell theory. So we are learning the parts of cell theory in this lab. All right. Um, some, a lot of you got this part right, but when it got to letting you go and doing it on your own, several were struggling. So let's get on with it. So the first part of the lab, and I'm going to do something like this, minimize. We have to exit it down here. And there's three parts to the lab, three little post-it notes that I was telling everyone about. All right, in this experiment, you're going to use a microscope to find evidence that all living things are made of cells. All right, so we are going to find out 
all living things are made of cells. But first, we have to learn the parts of a microscope. And um, you guys were supposed to do, supposed to work with microscopes in sixth grade, like hands on, like touch one and stuff. I don't even know if they're going to do that anymore because of all this virus going around. So you might not even get it in seventh grade. Just talking. All right. Um, <laughs> I might, uh, the function, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this really small like that so that we can type and go. See how, see how I did that? I just kind of grabbed it on the side, held and dragged it. This way I can keep it open and right. Okay, so the function of the eyepiece. This is the eyepiece. Used to view the specimen. Okay. Used to view the specimen. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Ocular lens that was also in the same spot. So the, if the eyepiece is used to view the specimen on a slide, this lens has a 10 times magn magnification power. Okay. Offers, ocular lens offers 10 X, which means 10 times magnification power. Objective lens. Hmm. Lens. So these are lenses and they kind of twist. If you ever do get around to a microscope, they can twist and lock into place and you can have different magnifications where you can see something closer or even closer or not as close. They're really cool. All right. So what do these things do? Uh, they have three or four different lenses. The most common are four, 10 and 40 times. That means you can look at something 40 times closer than what you can see with your bare eyes. Like if you can go in again, 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 40 times, that's what you will, uh, that's what you'll see. It gives you that opportunity. So it's very, very fun. All right. So offers four times, 40 and 400, was that correct? Oh no, four, 10 and 40. There's just stronger ones, so <laughs> four, ten times, and forty times. So, very close. Uh, magnification, if you want. All right, what is a slide? Um, should be somewhere around here. Oh, yeah. That's moving. Whee! Okay, slide. Slide and cover slip. It's necessary to place a specimen on a slide. Oh, my Specimen on a slide when viewing under a, a compound light microscope to transfer it regularly holds the specimen in place. Cover slip to cover the specimen. Okay, um, the slide just pretty much holds. Um, it's where you place a specimen on. Where you place the specimen on, like the thing that you're going to observe. Cover slip. It was talking about it. Um. Cover slip covers the specimen, keeps it clean, clean. So uh, covers, my work area is so small. Okay, covers specimen and keeps it clean. You don't want to be breathing on it and um, add your cells into something that you're looking at. So we have to keep it clean. Okay, stage. 
Um, a stage allows you to investigate the oh, it's going to be turning specific dials move the stage. Let's see what it says about the first stage. Um, place where the slide goes. Okay. That's fine. Place where the slide goes. Maybe I can just zoom out a little bit. Oop. So it's not um There we go. Okay, focusing dials. That looks like this. Um, they are used to make the magnified image you are viewing clear and focused. So makes the image focused. You have to turn the little dials to make it focused. So makes the image focused. Kind of like a telescope. If you've ever used one, you got to turn the dials and you can look at a planet or the moon really focused. All right, light. I think it's down here. Um, illuminates the slide. That means it makes it bright so that you can see it. Illuminates, or we can just say lights the slide so that we are able to see it with our eyes. Condenser lens, I think that was down there as well. Um, light travels through the thin specimen on the glass side. The image produces magnified by the lenses. So it magnifies the light. The light that um, this part brings in uh, down here, it magnifies it and makes it stronger. That's what a condenser lens does. It kind of, it's kind of bent so that it can make the light stronger. All right. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Let's minimize and go next. All right. So now we are going to see some specimens. We're going to see a plant cell, animal cell, and bacteria cell, and we're going to put it right here. We're going to start with the plant cell, because that's what it's asking. <laughs> okay, plant cell, here you go. Select high power lens to view this, view this at 400 magnification. Okay, I guess we put it at 400. We're going to now focus. There we go. All right, plant cell. We are to describe how it looks. Okay, and what is it? Okay, these are these are from an onion. Record observations. Okay, so it's from an onion. So we're just going to say onion. Well, from an onion. How do they look? They are pink and cir well, circular, right? So round, we can say round. Um together circular reddish tint blue tint round okay we'll say circular we'll be scientists circular um what is it? red tint blue tint okay so it's from an onion the cells are circular and they have a red and blue tint and they they also vary in size right Onions look pretty cool under the microscope. I hope you do get the chance to see some onions under the microscope. Especially when you cut off a little piece yourself and stick it underneath there. And you like dye it so you can see like the, the nucleus and everything. It's cool. Alright, animal cell. Alright, select the power. Boop. Okay, looks like it worked. I think. Yeah. Okay, these are red blood cells from an animal. So um, you also have red blood cells in your body, and that's kind of how they look. So are they bigger or smaller than the onion cells? So red blood cells, smaller than plant cells. Um, they're also spaced out more. And they are spaced out more. Okay. Mm 
I guess it doesn't matter because I'm going to keep... Everyone got it? Okay. Remember, you can, like I said, you can always pause. That's the beauty of doing it on um, recording. All right. Um, magnification. Okay. Bacteria cells. Rod shaped. Um, they're kind of yellowish brown. So they're bacteria. Hmm. Rod shaped. That means they're like kind of flattened out. Um. With spaces between them. They're not all clumped together tightly. Like, say, uh, muscle tissue. Uh, and yellow-green color. Okay? Phew! We can always take a break. Hmm. Yeah, if we did this on the Zoom, it's going to take forever. All right, um, next. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. All right, oh, questions. Which of the specimens that you observed are made of cells? Plant, animal, bacteria, all of them. They're all made of cells, as we've learned. How did the invention of the microscope contribute to cell theory? It showed cells for the first time. It disproved spontaneous generation. Well, it didn't disprove it. It didn't disprove anything. It just gave them the opportunity to see something really close. Smaller than cells? Well, maybe not right away. It took a while before they got that far. So it's got to be that one. Okay. Great. Next. All right, so now we're going to see Louis, Louis Pasteur, that guy I was talking about, the guy that made figured out um, bacteria came from uh, other bacteria. So we are going to do an experiment. So we're going to turn this on. So we're going to heat these two flasks and see what grows. But we're going to do something to one of them. See, we're heating them. All right, now we're gonna cool them. And then we're going to break off the top. Click. All right, repeat his work by observing what happens in each flask over five days. Record your observations in your lab report. So this is day zero and it wants day one. And here's the broken neck that we broke off and here's the one with the intact neck. So let's see. Um, can we do next day? No, okay, uh, I guess hit next. Whoa, whoa, stop, stop. All right, whoa, whoops, okay, day one. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Broth looks yellow. This is the one on the left, right there, you can see. It's just yellow, it's not pee. It's a broth, like chicken broth. Um, flask with the intact neck. That means it's a neck that hasn't been broken. Looks the same. So, also looks yellow. Day two. Well, the broth looks the same, but this one has... Something in his little neck there. It looks like bacteria. So... The one on the left is not changed. So... It looks yellow still. Uh, and then on the one on the right... Microorganisms. Microorganisms... Are growing in the neck okay let me see okay 
right, double O. <laughs> okay, microorganisms are growing in the neck, but not in the broth, right? Hello. All right. So on day two, the one on the left looks the same. The one on the right begins to grow something in her neck, but not in the broth, right? See, that was day two. Day two. Both the same broth, but something's growing here. Day three. Whoa. So this one gets lighter yellow in color. And it looks like, yes, there is more growing in the neck. Okay. Turned brighter yellow. More growing in the neck. Okay. Day four. Even more is growing here. And finally, they have some organisms growing in the one on the left. So after day four, microorganisms <laughs> are growing in the broth. More growing in the neck none in the broth still right let's make sure of that yes i don't see anything in there okay so they're all growing there and this one's growing inside so as we're getting as we're walking along this you can see that uh, um <clears throat> they can't get up this little tube and go in here. This has been broken, so the organisms have been able to, the cells in the air um, have been able to contact this broth and um, make it multiply and do its bacteria thing. This one, they didn't get far enough. They can't, they can't get over this little, they can't climb, they don't have arms, so they can't get in there and get to where they want to go. Make sense? I, I hope so. <laughs> Okay, day five. Looks like the same thing. Excuse me. Okay. Day five. Several microorganisms in the left and still more on the right. Same thing. So, several. Growing ah, in broth. More in the neck. None in broth. Broth is the soup stuff. Okay. So, as I was saying, because it's open, they could contaminate this, and because this is bent, they weren't able to climb up here and get into there. But they were trying. All right. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. That's good. I think that was all of them, right? Yeah, I thought so. Okay. All right, Um. moving on. What effect did removing the neck of one flask have? Um, it never changed the temperature of it, did it? It never really change pressure in order to change pressure you have to close something so that's not right so it has to be that one okay expose the broth to the air so that microorganisms can get in why were two flasks instead of just one that's that's a good question why do we have two why don't we just have one just figure it out we need a control we need a control um i mean the other Two are precautions, but in order to have a control, you have to have you have to compare it to something else. In order to do a valid experiment, as we've learned, you have to compare it to a control. Otherwise, it's just pointless of doing your experiment. All right, on to the last one. Hopefully, it's just not taking too long. Um, 
What makes something alive? Um, it has to grow, it reproduces, it uses energy. Um, I guess it has eyes. Uses nutrients, breathes oxygen. Let's just do all of them. Okay, no. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. They're being very specific. Okay, yeah. It doesn't have to breathe oxygen in order to be alive. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, it doesn't have to have eyes to be alive. I got you now. Like, like a plant. A plant doesn't need eyes to be alive. Okay. <laughs> Something must okay in order for something to be alive, it must grow, reproduce, and use energy and nutrients. Part of the cell theory states that cells are basic unit of life. How can we test this in your experiment? You will attempt to grow colonies of bacteria cells under two conditions one will provide energy and nutrients for the cell, and one will not. Okay, what will happen? Record your prediction on your lab report. Okay, all right, so now we have another experiment. <laughs> Um, we're going to count the bacteria cells this time use like a number. Petri dishes are small circular plates used in labs. And you'll see this here. Those are Petri dish dishes. The agar solution is a gel-like substance used to grow small samples of bacteria. Add agar solution to each Petri dish on the lab table. Begin by dragging the agar solution with nutrients to the Petri dish on the lab uh, on the left to fill it. Then select next. Okay. Add it to each add each sugar solution to each petri dish. Okay. So this is an agar. This is like like jelly, like like jello. Think of like jello. It's kind of like what it feels like if you ever touch it, which you will. Um and this is without nutrients. Why don't you stop? Boy. Come on. Why won't... Okay, okay, maybe you want me to hit that. Okay. Drag the agar solution without nutrients onto the right side. Okay, yes. I was trying to do that. <laughs> okay. Drag a swab to the bacteria to pick it up. Apply bacteria to both the Petri dishes. Drag the swab to the bacteria. Okay, so we're going to take this. Pick up some bacteria. Whee! And then we are going to move it to... The agar with nutrients. Boop. Then we're going to click it again. Please work for me. <laughs> and put it without nutrients. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe they made you kids do all this. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, that's why I'm doing this for you. Alright. So we have one with nutrients. Stuff that bacteria like to eat. And one without. Let's go. Day one. There are, so these are um, bacteria. And the one with nutrients has three. Three bacteria cells. Without nutrients, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Day two. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Same. Three. So obviously, it takes a while before life begins to do its thing and make more bacteria. Day three. Ooh, something's happening. One, two, three, four, five on the left. Uh, one, two, three, four, five on the right. Huh. 
So immediately I see that this one is growing and this one is beginning to go down because it doesn't have nutrients in it. Mm. Day four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the left. And on the right is four now. It's going down. Last day. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, nine, and I'm gonna assume this guy's going down. Three. All right, so remember, you can always pause and just copy because we're doing this together. It's quite a lot, isn't it? And we ain't done yet. <laughs> All right. Um, conclusion. How do scientists discover all living things are made of cells? Um, because how did the science figure out that uh, we had cells to begin with? Like they just thought of it or they used something to find it. What did they use to find cells? because they used microscopes actually they kind of went along and invented microscopes <laughs> they were able to see cells okay make it red for you How did Pasteur's experiment with the flasks, remember your flasks that you that you did, um, help to disprove the idea that living things could just appear or come from living things like water and air? So we learned that because the water and air were touching the broth, bacteria came from it. But because the other one was blocked, the bacteria could not get in. So let's see... Let's see if there's a quick way we can write this down. Um, in order for bacteria to grow, it must be exposed to air. Um, the experiment showed um, the the broken flask showed this. Well, I'm trying to make it not so long. So in order for bacteria to grow, it has to be exposed to air. Because it was broken, it was exposed to air and bacteria grew. Why are nutrients needed for living things? Describe the difference between living and non-living things. Okay. Living things need nutrients to survive, right? Okay, yeah. This is okay. This has to do with our last experiment with the um, the agar. The uh, the last part we saw that the one on the right died off. the The nutrients, the the bacteria, died off without nutrients, and this one it exploded with nutrients. So this proves that living things need nutrients in order to survive and reproduce, right? Otherwise, it dies. Otherwise, it dies. Non-living things do not need nutrients. Right? Like a rock. If we put a rock in there, it just it just won't do anything, right? It'll just sit there. <laughs> so 
Living things need nutrients to survive, and we demonstrated that with the last experiment. So, there it is. There's the lab. I cannot believe I did this to you the second week. Um, I feel terrible, <laughs> but I had to give it. We had to. They said we can't give you anything else. So, um, I'm going to scroll up in case you need to pause the video at any specific point and get this work done. Okay. We did three labs and we went over the microscope. And we did answer this one, right? Yeah. To learn the parts of cell theory. So hopefully you know all about cell theory and you'll remember it till eighth grade. Oh, and that's um, uh, something else. I'm, I am moving to eighth grade next year. Back to where I, I like, because <laughs> I love space. So I'll be, um, I might be your eighth grade teacher. <laughs> so keep that in mind. But if you like this, um, you can still teach like this in eighth grade, like for added support if you need it. If you like it, just let me know. Um, Miss Polk and I will be doing um, a Zoom next Wednesday for the drawing for kids who did all their work. So here's your, um, here's your last one. I did it for you. Uh, the other worksheet for this week 4.03 was like a reading you just look at the reading and you answer the questions that's it i don't think you really need me for that so just try and answer best you can and if you got all your work done you're in the drawing and you get to win some prizes i'm not sure what we're giving out but it, it should be fun and it will be our last hurrah and we'll say goodbye and everything and just have a good old time <laughs> all right great so thanks for joining me all these times uh, doing your work and just being awesome thank you all right guys i will see you soon hopefully and um take care bye bye <laughs>